Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you with the joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we welcome you to another study period with us here at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Newark, Delaware. We are truly praying for those far and near. Those who have started to watch our services, we just thank God for you. And if, 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 amen, you are in the local area, Whenever we come back in, we hope to see your smiling faces. We ask now that you would pray for the family, amen, of Brother Neil Thorpe and that of, amen, uh, Sister Gladys Jones uh, in the passing of, amen, his mother, amen, uh, brother, uh, Sister Brown, whose services will be held on February the 4th, amen. At Ezon Fair Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware at 10 a.m. We ask that you would just continue to lift up uh, the family of Rose Brown. We realize that we are standing in the midst of turmoil with Russia and that of Ukraine. We ask that you would lift up your prayers and, and ask God to just cover amen, this nation, that we might not go into conflict with our allies against that of Russia. We pray for lives everywhere. We pray that you will protect us here, hearing, amen, that a bomb threat, amen, had been put out at that of, amen, Delaware State University. We ask that you will continue to pray. We ask that you will continue to pray for our church. We thank all of you who attended, amen, our annual leadership conference, our presenters and all of the members who participated in our session. We thank God for you. We also ask that those of you who did not complete the survey from our leadership conference, that you would, amen, get with your uh, ministry presidents because they will have the link for it so that we can have a good survey on our conference. This is the means as to how we gauge, amen, the effectiveness of the conference. And for those who may not be in ministry, we ask that you will uh, email pilgrim1325 at gmail.com and uh, request the survey and the survey will be given to you. We ask now that you will continue to support the ministry here at the church, with your giving and with your substances, we, amen, have made it this far because you have been diligent and obedient to God. Don't stop now. Amen. We are working, trying to prepare ourselves to re-enter down the road. We realize that the virus is going to be here. But God, amen, is still leading and guiding us along the way. We also ask that you will just continue, amen, to study the word of God. Study to show thyselves approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, one for the other. Come join us this evening. As we prepare to go into the lesson coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 12, amen, verses 1 through 9 and 13 through 15, as Nathan condemns David. We pray that this lesson will be inspiring, uplifting, and informative, eye-opening to each and every one doing this study. Come join us now, amen, and let us be blessed of the Lord. Good evening to each and every one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. We greet you once again with the joy of our Lord. We welcome you to another study period with us here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. We ask that you get your Bibles and prepare to walk with us through uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9 and verses 13 through 15. As we speak to you, Nathan condemns David. Nathan condemns David. I will begin our reading coming out of the New King James Translation. 
of the Bible from verses 1 through 9 and then verses 13 through 15. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay his bosom lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his own take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wavering man that was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing should surely die. And he shall restore the lamb for a fool, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee my master's house, thy master's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain with the sword of the children of Ammon, and David said, verses 13 to 15, And David said unto Nathan, I have, sinned, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sins. Thou shalt not die. How be it because thou hast, hast, hast this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Children also, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. All right, as we uh, come to this, this story in the Bible with Nathan and David, Nathan being the high priest of, of the Lord, uh, came unto David because of David's waywardness and David's sin. David, in, in chapter 11, had taken that of Bathsheba, watching her bathe on the outside, looking down from his balcony. David lusted after Bathsheba. And God was upset with David. God had become angry with David. And David had said nothing. No one had mentioned what had taken place between David and Bathsheba. David, a man, had, con had committed the sin of adultery. And now God sends Nathan to uncover his sin. And as we look at the first verse, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there was two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Here he sets the stage concerning the, 
<coughs> the wealth of the rich man. He had to come unto David another way. He could not come to the king head on with just telling him that he had sinned. So Nathan came with a story. Nathan talks about two men, one that was rich and exceedingly rich with many flocks and herds, and that indicated the wealth of the man. But then he looks at the poor man, and uh, the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb. He draws out the story concerning the lamb and how the lamb had been raised, amen, uh, by, amen, the poor man, how he grew up and how he was fed, how he was really a pet, how his children embraced the lamb and how the lamb was kept. He talks about the lamb. Amen. In such a way uh, as to uh, 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 using the analogy that the lamb lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. So now he equates to David. Amen. Him lying with Bathsheba. Bathsheba, amen, was like the daughter. So here he, amen, makes it plain to David that David had sinned. Bathsheba's name was defined as daughter of abundance. And here we find that Nathan takes the time to draw out the story unto David. And the Bible says that the traveler that had come and the traveler that came to the rich man, and it was a custom that those strangers that travel before there was ever hotels would abide in the homes of those who would allow them in. And here he talks about a man, uh, the traveler coming to the rich man, and rather than the rich man going to his own flock and going to his own herd, a man, he went and had taken the poor man's lamb in order to dress it and to kill it and to prepare it so that the stranger could eat. Oh, when David heard this story, David was angered, amen, in his heart. David was truly angry because David had been the one that had kept his father's sheep. He knew how important it was, amen, to protect the sheep from the dangers on the outside. This gives us evidence that, amen, the rich man was taking this man in in order to keep him away from violence. If they had nowhere to stay, it would probably end up that he would be beaten or killed by those, amen, robbers or others uh, of ill report. But he takes this man in, takes the poor man's lamb, Amen. In verses 4, it says, And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wearing man that was come unto him. But the poor man's lamb and dressed it, took the poor man's lamb and dressed it, Amen. For the man that was come unto him. So when David heard this in verse 5, it says that David was angered greatly. Amen. His anger had been kindled against the man, even so much as to tell Nathan, amen, that as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing should surely die. David didn't realize that Amen. Nathan was truly speaking of him. David, amen, had taken Bathsheba's husband Uriah, had put him on the front line in order that he might be killed in battle, trying to hide his sin, for Bathsheba was with child. And because of this, David, amen, uh, found himself not being able to get out of the situation. But because he had put Uriah to death or had him killed, 
the, the, the Lord looked at that as David, a man committing the sin of murder. And here in verse number six, and he says, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. So David looked, <clears throat> knowing that the poor man had only the hue lamb, the rich man had more than he could spare. But yet the rich man would not, a man, gather a lamb from his own herd, but took it from the poor man. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, how are we pictured in this scene? How are we when God has blessed many, a man, to have more than they could spare, but yet they go out and try to rob from the poor? Amen. We're living in a time now when the poor are being taken advantage of. Amen. The poor are being overtaxed and yet the rich, amen, get richer. Oh, the story, amen, bears record to the mindset of those one percenters. Not every one percenter, amen, is evil or bad, but the majority of them have stepped on the little man. And here, God is making a man a difference through the story of Nathan. And Nathan, after David makes this statement, looks at David and says, David, thou art the man. And immediately, David was pricked in his heart. David realized that he had sinned against God. In verse number 7, amen, when, David, when Nathan, amen, presents this to David, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Nathan said, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. So what David, a man, had uh, overcome, Nathan now was bringing it back to his remembrance. David, don't you realize how good God had been to you? Don't you realize that God has raised you up from being a sheep herder to being king of all Israel. David, don't you realize that God, a man, saved you from Saul as Saul sought to destroy you. I have given thee, a man, the king's house. Listen to what he said in verse number eight. I gave thee thy master's house. So in other words, when God took a man, the spirit from Saul and gave Saul an evil spirit, God, Saul was a man determined that he was going to destroy David. God hid David as David ran, but David had an ally in the son of Saul named Jonathan. They too, a man, a man who worked together in order that David's life might be saved. But here in verse number 8, not only did he give him a man, the master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and I gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. So what Nathan was saying to David, all David had to do if he wanted something else was to pray and ask God for it. And God said, I would have supplied your need. I would have given you what you wanted. But David, thou has sinned in the sight of God. And here, amen, Jonathan lets him know, I have raised you up to be king of Judah. I have raised you up now to be king of all Israel. Oh, brothers and sisters, God had blessed David tremendously. But here Jonathan says, wherefore in verse 9, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. Thou hast taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him 
with the sword of thy children, of, of the children of Ammon. So here he lets it be known what David did not know, Jonathan, I mean Nathan knew. David now was confronted that God has spoken to Jonathan. Jonathan now, being a prophet of the Lord, was delivering the message that God had given him for King David. King David, once again, was pricked in his heart, knowing uh, that Jonathan, Nathan now, excuse me, knew what he had done. Had given the commandment that they would put Uriah on the front line of the battle. That Uriah might be slain. David tried to cover up, amen, what God was now exposing to him. Oh, and, John, and Nathan, amen, it drew this picture so that David would have clarity that God knew what he has done. But look at the mercy of God. Nathan condemns David, but here God spares David. For Nathan says, and David said unto Nathan, listen at what he said. I have sinned against the Lord God. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. God was now showing mercy unto David. David has spoken out of his own mouth that the one who had taken the ewe lamb and slayed it should be one to die. But here, Nathan is letting David know that God was so merciful and kind. God was not through with David yet. God had now put aside David's sin because David was a prayer warrior. David was known as, as a man after God's own heart. And because of this situation, David went to the Lord in prayer. David went, as we read in, amen, the 51st Psalm. The 51st Psalm says that David said, Have mercy upon me, God, according to thy loving kindness and according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. David knew how to talk to God. David went on to say in that 51st Psalm, Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I, have, I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and only, amen, thee have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges. Behold, I was, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. David went to the Lord in prayer. David knew how to talk to God. And David was so, amen, earnest with God. He says in verse 7 of that 51st Psalm, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall, I, I, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from, thy, from my sin. Blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me, listen to that David now, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy, with thy free spirit. David knew how to talk to God. David was asking God for mercy. David was asking God, amen, for, amen, restoration. He had now repented of his sin. He took it to God. Upon his discourse now with Nathan, he could not get angry with Nathan because Nathan was following the dictates of Almighty God. And because Nathan told the story and had exposed David's sin, nobody knew this but God, David, and that of Nathan. 
Oh, my brothers and sisters, in verse number 14. Listen at what he says. How be it? Because thy because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child shall thou the, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So what what God was saying because of your sin, because it was done, amen, in and backward way, an underhanded way. Amen. The child shall not live. And the child became gravely ill as the story continues. David, amen, went, amen, and started to pray. I'm going off the script now. David went and started to pray, put on sackcloth and ashes, prayed, amen, for the child. And when the child had died, here comes his servant and said, King David, the child is dead. David arose, amen, got up and cleaned himself up, went to the table to eat. He says unto the servant, amen, God has answered, amen, and I will receive what God has said. God had already told him that the child would not live. And so in verse number 15, and Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bound to David, and it was very sick. So the child ended up passing away. So what God was saying unto us, he did not reward the sin of David, but he cleaned it up. Amen. And brought forth down the road another one called Solomon. Oh, brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that we're living under mercy and grace? Aren't you glad that we serve a God that has not taken you and I out of here because of our transgression? God is an awesome God. And Nathan condemns David, but God restores David. God said unto David, Amen, that you are one after myself. You are a man after my own heart. You own up to your sins. You own up to your shortcomings. And I like what David said in that 51st Psalm. He says, when you do this, then I will teach transgressors thy way and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So David said, I'm going to praise you, God. I'm going to serve you because of what you have done to me. I'm going to praise you everywhere. Even though I'm king, I'm not so proud. I'm not sitting so high that I can't give you praise. How about you today? Have God been so good to you? Have God, amen, as I said on Sunday, have God given you a crumb blessing that you can praise his name? Have God been so good to you in little ways as well as in big ways that you can praise his name? I'm talking to somebody who think that God a man cannot forgive. I'm talking to somebody who think that they are so bad that they can't change. I'm talking to somebody this afternoon, a man who has have gone down in the valley of despair. Don't you know we serve a God? who sent his son to, to save the sinner, to send his son to bring the lost back to the Lord. So brothers and sisters, uh, yes, amen, all you got to do is own up. Let God know that you need him in your life. Do like David, amen, uh, clean me, wash me, that I might be whiter than snow. Forgive me of my trans. That's all God is looking for. That's all God is wanting us to do. And that is to know that we can't do it by ourselves. All have sinned. Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
and Romans 6, 23. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I come to bear record that God, amen, is able to clean you up. No matter how low you have gotten, no matter uh, how depressed you have become, you need to turn back to the Lord. Don't you know that sin separates us from God? But repentance, amen, will bring us back into unity with God. Oh, I want somebody to know uh, that God is looking at you. God is wanting you to turn from your wicked ways, turn from your worldly ways. Come back on the Lord's side. Give him the praise for the great things that he has done. So I don't know who this lesson is for, but God is able to forgive you. God is able to restore you. God is omniscient. He is all knowing. He already knows where you are. He already knows your dilemma, but he already knows your state of mind. God is wanting you to have joy, peace, amen, and happiness in your life. Will you Come back to the Lord. Will you own up? Amen. Knowing that all have come short of the glory of God. Oh, there's none righteous. No, not one. There was only one righteous person. And that was our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So, brothers and sisters, I extend the invitation for someone to come on the Lord's side. Oh, and if you want to be saved this evening, if you want to turn from your wicked way, if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, would you come on the Lord's side this afternoon? Repeat after me if this message has touched you. Father, I ask you into my life, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and my transgressions. As David, I have sinned greatly in your sight. But I know now that you are able to forgive and restore. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe, amen, that he died, that he was buried. I believe that on the third day he rose again. Not having some power, but having all power in his hand. Father, I ask you now, enter my life. Mold me, shape me into what you would have me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've repeated these words, the Bible says, not Reverend Rector, the Bible says that you are now a child of God. That if thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart, oh, that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shall be saved. Oh, brothers and sisters, he does not lie. All God wants you to do is just repent of your sins, turn from your wicked ways, and come back on the Lord's side. Read your Bible. Get in a Bible study. Get in a church if you don't belong to one. And watch what God will do in your life. I thank God this evening for this study. Let us bow as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. Thou will draw thyself from us, Lord. Where shall we go? Father, we humble ourselves now in your presence. Thanking you for your word. Thanking you for your goodness, your kindness. Thanking you for our Savior called Jesus. Father, we come now asking that you will reach out unto all of those who have listened this evening. Maybe there's someone who is of low degree. Maybe there's someone who thought that they could not be saved and restored. I ask you to touch them right now. I bind the devil, amen, cast him back to the pit of hell that he would loose your children and let them go. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just touch the sick and the afflicted all over the land and country. Bless our bereaved, bless our children, cover this nation. Bless those, oh, Mo oh Father, who are stirring up turmoil with Russia and Ukraine. We ask, oh God, that you would intervene. We ask now that you, amen, would stretch out your hand 
and allow peace, amen, to be restored among the wicked. Oh God, we ask now that you would just bless us as only you can. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. God bless each and every one of you this evening. And just remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed evening.